magical. Believe it. Whoever insults my hair will get the full brunt of my fury. Shut up, you idiot. Hey, it's me, Goku. As it does, time would have passed by now as we close into the period where Naruto would partake in the Katsuki suppression arc. As per usual, the events would go as they do up until the point where we arrive at the Rossing Shuriken training. In this case, instead of adding wind release or anything like that to the Rasengan, Naruto would strive to stabilize his Rasengan, or something similar. As if he could stable the dark matter or stabilize the dark matter, he would be able to accomplish things like the Odama Rasengan and get more desired effects out of the Jutsu. So, by mastering it or spending these few weeks or however long it had initially taken to achieve the Rasengan or the Rasengan Shuriken, he would have instead had spent it on his Dark Matter Rasengan or previously unstable Rasengan, mastering it and its variants. This would, as per usual, lead to Naruto having a late arrival in the Kakazu and Hidan fight in the second part of the Akatsuki suppression arc slash mission as he would arrive to as per usual destroy Kakuzu's final heart but to where he usually did it using wind release in this case he would have to draw Kakuzu out to a different location so that he can use the Rasengan which even though is now more stable its desired effect is rather destructive to anyone whom is not impartial to it so Naruto is the only candidate capable of being close when the jutsu goes off. So, after Naruto had thus lured Kakazu away, he would be able to throw a few of his Rasengans, and most likely their Odama variants, as they would get the desired effect, which is basically using the dark matter to create a sequence in between the normal matter, splitting the particles apart, throwing them in every which direction, causing a collision most probably or even possibly, as they would most likely end in some sort of atomic explosion. Obviously, this might be able to chain, but depending on how much chakra and control goes into the Rasengan, it might not necessarily have as big of an explosion as per se Hiroshima. In this specific case, he would leave a crater probably the size of a football field in the place where Kakuzu used to stand as the Akatsuki member would be fully obliterated, not even a ring remaining. On the other hand, as per usual, Shikamaru would have at this point lured Hidan into the forest and most likely sealed him away, as we do not even know if Naruto's Rasengan in this case would be able to work on Hidan or not, since the nature of his Kekigenkai, which we cannot confirm to be a Kekigenkai, Perhaps Lord Jashin is real and is somewhere out there, but as to these effects, we do not know if Naruto's Rasengan would work. So, for now, as usual, Hidan would be sealed within the Nara forest, being overlooked by the Nara deer. As usual, Shikamaru would take Asuma's lighter and use it as a stress reliever, and also deliver Asuma's shuriken or his kunai-type knucklebuster type of situation, to uh, his daughter or at least Kurenai for now as he would take Asuma's place as a father figure to his daughter. So moving forward we get to the next arc. Yes I do know this arc was kind of rushed over but there wasn't that much that we actually changed as if it was just a difference in what Rasengan Naruto had initially used and thus gives us a larger I guess, field to work with going forward. Since this was a form of limiter, we gave Naruto to not just one-shot opponents up until this point. Obviously, there will be some opponents with the durability to survive Naruto's jutsu, as even though it somewhat mimics something like an atomic bomb, it does not give the exact same effects. So it could, through durability, be survived dependent on his opponent. So, going forward, we are about to go over the events of the Itachi Pursuit mission. As per usual, Sasuke would form Team Taka, probably mostly undisturbed, as he would go on to find, or at least be found by, and go to his brother Itachi. 
This group, Team Taka, consists of Soigetsu, Hozuki, an unknown shinobi called Jugo, whose Keke Genkai can be connected to Sasuke's curse seal in some way, and an Uzumaki named Karin, who has a weird healing ability, you could say. And, as per usual, after taking care of their business, they would make their way to the old Uchiha hideout, where Sasuke would have his face off with Itachi, which would not have many changes from its canon counterpart, except the fact that Naruto himself had originally destroyed Orochimaru, and Sasuke would have most likely ended up killing Sai leaving a non-sage mode Kabuto, at least for now, following Sasuke around from the shadows, and Orochimaru emerging from his curse mark, per usual, with that last snake slithering away once again. At this point, I feel Kabuto would finally make the association that these snakes are how Orochimaru consistently comes back. And I assume at least that there are still a few curse mark experiments left behind for Kabuto to make use of and retrieve Orochimaru. In this specific situation, I feel a majority of the tests to bring back Orochimaru would in fact fail as a lot of the curse marks remaining are very unstable. And thus, with many failed experience, exper experiments and experiences, I feel Kabuto would get madly obsessed with Orochimaru, to the point where every time it would fail, he would absorb the chunks of Orochimaru that had come out of each individual curse mark, leaving him to be some sort of snake-sage hybrid type of situation, or some sort of amalgamation of Orochimaru himself and the concept of Snake Sage, leading us to still have events similar to how we had them in canon. And, as per usual, while the events of the Itachi Pursuit mission come to an end, and before the battle with Itachi begins, having those very few vocal changes and that alone, we still have the tale of Jiraiya the Gallant. The arc where Jiraiya initially perishes against his previous student, Pain. Destroy. With the startup to this arc, we have some true alterations. As per usual, Jiraiya would have the suspicion of the reign still being led by Hanzo the Salamander, meaning this would be more of a diplomatic infiltration and spying mission. Naruto in suit would ask to join Jiraiya as if, if they got caught, he would be a much larger help in getting away, since he thinks not even Jiraiya would be able to catch him if he were to run. Jiraiya would give off a laugh or two as he would all of a sudden go serious, asking Naruto to remain in the leaf as he has a past with this individual. But as Naruto does, he would persist, and Jiraiya would eventually crumble, and having no reason to not take Naruto along, he would now be accompanied by the Nine-Tailed Jinchuriki to investigate and somewhat communicate with not only the rain, but its higher-ups, trying to set some form of alliance as the Leaf and Sand had done prior. So, as we see things change, we see Jiraiya accompanied by Naruto entering through a very specific toad, and for a short period, being pretty unaffected by the constant rainfall, which we discover is a form of sensory jutsu held by the leader Pain. Obviously, at first, the name Pain would trigger something in Jiraiya and even have curiosity within Naruto, as this is a pretty vague term. It could just refer to what they call their leader in stake, but this is when Jiraiya would start to think that Hanzo might not be around anymore. And as per usual, Jiraiya would have the idea of kidnapping some rain shinobi, and that's exactly what him and Naruto would proceed to do. With some methods, I'm not saying it's torture, but I'm also not saying it's not. They would persuade the shinobi to give them as much information on the situation as possible. They would discover that uh, the Akatsuki had actually been leading the village, and the leader Pain had actually had enforcers who he can see through their eyes and control their every move. At first, this seems vague to both parties as they don't really know what the hell it means. The shinobi not having half the information himself. As he would say, the last time the leader came out, he went into that tower and he hasn't come back out since. 
basically referring that the leader of the Akatsuki and the leader of the village both roam with inside that tower. This would not only lead Naruto to have another curiosity strike, as these guys almost killed Gara, and at this point have actually not yet killed Yukine. Since Gara had not been fully collected, Yukine is not an assured target yet, meaning before we went into the previous arc, Yukine had been left safe. So, going forward, we see Naruto and Jiraiya leaving their sensory-free toad to investigate this pain individual, as they would initially run into some familiar faces. These faces more so familiar to Jiraiya than to anyone else, as one of these faces are a shinobi that he had killed in the past and are actually present within one of his novels, and the other, his previous student, Yahiko. And with this realization comes an opportunity for the group we know as the Paths of Pain to attack our boy Jiraiya. This opportunity would be null taken as Naruto would be there to defend his master, putting a large point of gravity right in front of them, affecting all the pains at first. But as they jump back and Jiraiya knows to prepare, they would decide to spread out and attack more in a circular format, I guess you could say, as they now are prepared for what Naruto has to dish out. At first, they would split up, or at least attempt to split Naruto and Jiraiya up, as only five pains are currently present. Two would follow along with Jiraiya, as three would try and claim the Ninetales Jinchuriki, since with the Ninetales under the Akatsuki's thumb, the rest of the Tailed Beast should fall easily. With this comes the realization that everyone here is currently in danger, so Jiraiya would attempt to start kicking it up. As the Paths of Pain start taking the fight more seriously and making it much more intense, Jiraiya would decide to pull out the two toads, obviously our dude Lord Fukasaku and his wife to attempt to use his form of perfect sage mode. He would most likely easily destroy the two paths of pain he is faced with, as in Yahiko or the Parada path would most likely be put on Naruto, as it is the strongest of the paths, at least arguably, and Naruto is a much more valuable target to the Akatsuki than Jiraiya would ever be. So, when Jiraiya dispatches of his paths, he would move to try and help Naruto, as he would discover one of Naruto's paths had already been destroyed. He would try to jump in and reason with the path that seems to be made of Yahiko's corpse, as he would get a response that would not be akin of Yahiko, but Nagato. That's when a real conversation mid-fight would start kicking in. Every time they clash, a short question or answer would be exchanged, revealing that this is in fact a corpse being controlled by Nagato. He would obviously ask of Conan, only to be met by some paper bombs, basically signalizing that Conan is still alive. But Naruto is not done yet. As he hears more of this conversation ensue, he would get progressively more angry, starting to leak some cloaks. And as he leaks some cloaks, that's when all the paths they had previously believed to be destroyed would start jumping back into the fight. This is where things get rather strange, as Jiraiya does not know what's going on. Now they're back against into a 2 versus 5 fight once again, as they would discover there is yet another path. Naruto would be the first to actually notice the connection between their visual prowess as he was attacking using a clone to a path from behind as no one was able to see it. But in Naruto's vision, something strange had happened. It had felt like everything had went slow and he was able to identify everything happening around him, when even for just a moment he was able to catch a glimpse of a figure in the distance. This figure had glowing purple eyes like the rest of the paths and would think that this might be what's going on. So he would use the clone once again to, as a distraction as he himself would go to inspect the figure. The figure would quickly jump away as the clone would get the upper hand or the series of clones would get the upper hand in fact destroying the path. 
This is when Naruto would use his now hidden position to keep an eye on the battlefield. He would then notice the corpse that he believed to be be dragged away by the person he had seen stand in the position he is currently in. By using his new sense of vision, he is able to follow along as he sees this individual conjure some sort of creature from the ground, throwing his to-be-believed comrade into it. Naruto at first would think that this is some sort of destruction method, but out of this creature would come a fully healed path once again. Naruto would reveal this to Jiraiya via clone as he would attempt to destroy this path on multiple occasions, only to be once again jumped by multiple paths. This would lead to a very uncomfortable situation, as Naruto and Jiraiya are both in a very odd situation where they're both slowly running out of chakra as their opponent seemingly has unlimited of it, or as close to unlimited as a human can naturally get. And, more likely than not, Jiraiya would probably still be suffering serious injuries throughout the span of this battle, as I feel seeing his master constantly beaten and bruised, Naruto would eventually enter a sort of frenzy state where Kurama is able to take over his mind, this time via tailed cloak instead of influence of the seal. I would say we would climb to about the sixth tail before Kurama's chakra itself would start instead of being red, turn purple, signifying a much more destructive version of the sixth tail cloak. This would leave him to destroy a most of the paths and eventually even use his natural sensing capability to find the hidden one, the one that had been healing them all along and even dispose of them. With this, Kurama would eventually be overwhelmed and taken back into Naruto, as Naruto would regain consciousness. Naruto would in fact be really exhausted after tapping into Kurama's energy, and would thus be left not conscious, but unconscious. This, vice versa, would trigger something in Jiraiya, knowing that it would be way too hard, or at least too dangerous, to continue with an injured Naruto and a tired self. Thus, he would ask Lord Fukasaku to go back to Mount Miyaboku and reverse summon them, as he sees the, this as the only valid way of getting out, since he does not know if there are more of these so-called paths, and yet he still has not made actual contact with either Nagato nor Konan. Thus, Naruto and Jiraiya would both be returned to Mount Miyaboku.